I'm David Maldo, and like a lot of you, I've been using OBS to add impact to my video calls and presentations. And today I want to show you how to add motion to your OBS sources. So for example, a lot of us are using OBS to add title bars to our videos. I'm going to show you how to have it slide in rather than just appear. And we can have it slide off in any direction, drop out, whatever we want. We can basically control any source in any way we want. Another example, if I want to start my presentation, I can bring in my trusty whiteboard and project my PowerPoint on it. These little visual enhancements just make your presentations a little bit more interesting, a little bit more fun, a little bit easier to watch. Now I'm assuming most of you using OBS for Business are probably doing things a little bit more traditionally. You probably just want to have your PowerPoint behind you. But again, if you want to have it zoom in, as opposed to just appearing behind you, it just could give that little bit of an edge to your presentation to make it a little bit more interesting. And the ability to move things in OBS doesn't just apply to backgrounds and graphics, I could even move myself. So as I'm going through my presentation, I could make myself smaller so you could see my, my PowerPoint. And then, oh, if I happen to be in the way, I could just move myself over to the other side and at any time make myself full size for more impact. Again, just being able to move things around just might be another option for you as opposed to just having things appear and disappear. Just like anything else, you don't want to overdo this to the point where it gets distracting, but if used correctly, it's a pretty nice effect. Now, before I show you how this is done, just a quick word about our sponsors. Holly has a long-standing relationship with Microsoft over 15 years, and this relationship keeps going strong to this day. Now with Microsoft Teams. Holly has a variety of great quality products that work flawlessly in Microsoft Teams meeting and calling. As a daily Polygear user, I'm using a Poly Studio P15 for today's tutorial. And all the techniques in this video work seamlessly in Microsoft Teams meetings. The P15 has exceptional optics, powerful audio, automatic camera framing, and cutting edge noise blocking tech giving you the freedom to move and command the conversation. The sleek bar is simple to set up and is Microsoft Teams certified which means video callers can expect a certain level of experience when using the camera for MS Teams calls. The Poly Studio P15 is also certified for Teams rooms for meeting room use and is an ideal solution for a focus room for one or two people. In fact, Poly has a range of conferencing cameras certified for Microsoft Teams rooms, all providing automatic camera framing technology. Besides the focus room kit with Studio P15, they have the small room kit with Poly Studio R30, medium room kit with the studio USB bar and large room kit with studio E70 camera. To learn more about the poly conferencing cameras available for Microsoft Teams and Microsoft Teams rooms and to see my full review of the studio P15 check out the links in the description. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to download and install the Move Transition plugin for OBS. This plugin allows OBS to, well, let us move things around the way I did just there. So let's go to the website. I'll put a link in the description. And here we have the Move Transition plugin. And by the way, the author of this plugin, Exceldro, he does great work. I use, a, I use a lot of his plugins. So to download it, just click the download button. Most of you should just use the uh, installer. Download it, unzip it, let it install itself. If you need to use the manual installer, there's instructions down here, but if you're doing a manual install, you probably know what you're doing. So now that we've got the plugin installed, let's open up OBS. Okay, so here we are in OBS. And for this video, I'm assuming you know the basics of scenes and sources. If not, I suggest you watch some of my older tutorials. For this demo, I have a basic setup. I just have one main scene with our office background, JPG, the LDV logo, and my webcam, which is a Poly Studio P15. And the only thing I have on it is the green screen filter. I know I moved fast there, but just setting up the basic. And we're gonna handle our motion through transitions. So if we go down to the scene transitions panel, we have our cut and fade, our basic cut and fade. And we have the ability to add new types of transitions. And if we added the plugin correctly, we should see the add move. Quick side note, in addition to this transition, the plugin also adds some move related filters. If I go to my main scene and go under filters and go to add a filter, I'll see three move, move source, move value, move transition override filters. I personally use these filters for different things. They allow for some advanced move related effects, but we're not going to cover them in this video. We're going to do all of our motion with transitions. 
That'll cover most of our use and it's a lot easier to manage. So in order to do a transition, we have to have more than one scene. So let's duplicate our main scene just for the demo. And I'm going to call this main scene logo on left. And in this one, I'm going to move my logo to the left. Now we're set for a cut transition. So if I switch between the scenes, it'll cut from one to the other. If we make it a fade transition, basic transitions in OBS, it now fades from one side to the other. So now when we create our move transition, it will move. So let's create our move transition. So we go right where we were before under transitions, add move. And for now, we can just call this move. You could have different types of move transitions that do different things and name them accordingly. So here we have the properties for our move transition. Let's drag this up. We can see more of our properties and let's move this over so we can, there we go. So you can still see me. Now, before we get into the settings, there's something I want to explain really quickly so you'll understand how all this works. There's three types of items that can move. There's something that's in both scenes. Remember, we're transitioning between scenes. So if something is in both scenes, but in different place, that would be a matched item. It's the same item, but it's moving. If something is in one scene, but it's not in the other scene, it's a disappearing item. It's there and then it's not. And, it, and the opposite, something isn't in the first scene and then it's in the second scene, it's a peering item. So these settings allow us to find the behaviors for matched items, appearing items, and disappearing items. We're not going to go through every single setting in detail. Some of them kind of explain themselves, and some of them are just different options for how things look as they're moving around, and you'll just have to see what your personal preference is. But let's set up a basic motion filter. So let's start with our matched items. And honestly, I, I tend to leave these at default. There's, it's just, again, it's different the way they float in, whether they speed up and speed out when they start, when they stop, that's the easing. Uh, this is different ways of them sort of bouncing in or flowing in. Uh, you could look up all these different curves. It's all this math stuff. Uh, but the basics seem to work for me. If we move down to our appearing items, now we have a few different options. These I tend to play with. One is position. If something's appearing, where is it going to float in from? Do you want it to just pop zoom in from the center? Do you want it to float in from the left? So let's, let's set it to float in from the left without a zoom. And again, the transition, if it's going to fade in or fade out, uh, if it curves as it's flowing in, items of personal preference, I'm just going to leave them at default. Now let's go down to our disappearing items and let's set this up. This is the same as the appearing items. Let's get rid of our zoom and have it go straight down to the bottom. Okay, now we can preview our transition. The new thing comes in from the left and the old thing goes down to the bottom. So let's see how it works with our scene. We can close our settings and set up now we have a new transition, we have move, we just added it, we created it, and now it's our option. And when we switch from main scene to logo on left, our logo moves from the left to the right. Now we also, we also created a, a disappearing and appearing, so let's try that. Let's just get rid of our logo, or just turn it off for now, on logo on left, now it's actually no logo. And when we go to our main scene, it swoops in from the left the way it told it to. When we go to our no logo scene, it disappears. New stuff goes in from the left. Old stuff disappears. And if we turn it back on, and this works for any item in the scene. Uh, if I turn off my, my webcam in the second scene, now I'm gone. So when I go to the main scene, I should swoop in from the left. There we go, with green screen issue. And when I go to this, I should disappear to the bottom. Okay, let's go back to home base here. So one last trick. You may have noticed at the beginning, I had some things coming in from the left and dropping down as I just showed you how to do, but I had other things that sort of seemed to zoom in from behind me. So how do I have things behaving differently? Well, I use multiple move transitions. So to demo that, let's set up another scene with my PowerPoint behind me. I'm going to duplicate my main scene, call it main scene PowerPoint. 
and then add a play capture. There you go. So now with our current move transition, the way it would work is when we switch to it, it slides in from the left. We don't want to do that. We also want to, don't need two logos, so we can get rid of that. So let's create our second move transition. Let's just go back to home base first. Okay, now let's create our transition. We're going to add another move. And this one, let's call it move center, because we want things to appear from the center. So again, let's roll this up so we can see our settings. We're going to leave matched items as they are. And appearing items, we want them to zoom in, not from the center left, but from the center with no transition. That should give us the effect we want. And we have disappearing items. Remember, we got rid of the logo, or we're hiding the logo in that other scene. So I don't want that to zoom. And I don't want it to go to any position. I'm going to leave that at, no I'm going to change that position to none. And this time I'm going to change the transition to fade. So it should fade out. So let's see what we get. We have our scene transition set to this new move center transition. And when we switch to the PowerPoint scene, there we go, the PowerPoint zooms in from behind us, from the center, and that logo faded away. Now the final note, I've now set everything to use this transition. So if you go back to the main scene, we see that same sort of behavior, things zooming in and things fading away. We might not want that. What we can do is we can set a different transition for each scene. And the way we do that is by right clicking on the scene in our scenes list and clicking transition override. So I'm gonna override the transition to our main scene to use the main move that first move transition that we created. I'm going to make the second one also use that move transition and have the third one use the new move center. So now let's see what behaviors we get. When we go to the main thing, things should drop down that go away and slide in from the left as they come in. And when we go to the PowerPoint scene, things should zoom in from the back and fade away. So of course, this is just a demo. I, I, I don't think I would have the logo flying in like that. I would have a, a fade or something, but just to show you how it works. But you get the idea. You can have a customized mood transition for each, each, of, each one of the scenes in your list. So I hope you found that helpful. Please let us know if you have any questions in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks.